Good morning, everyone. Today I will be talking about what drives eye rubbing and keratoconus and a few practical aspects on its management. So there has been an age-old debate on what came first, the chicken or the egg. Similarly, there has been a long discussion on whether eye rubbing causes keratoconus or whether keratoconus patients have more eye rubbing. So our research question today was what triggers this eye rubbing? Why do all these various patients rub their eyes in all these different ways? What are the local triggers? Over the last 10 years, we have studied extensively on keratoconus, and we have come up to understanding the mechanism underlying its pathogenesis. We know that it is a loop mechanism of injury and insult to the epithelium and stroma, but what we are interested in today is the very first step of this loop, which is eye rubbing. So the purpose of our study was to evaluate the association of serum and tear IgE levels in keratoconus patients with and without allergic eye disease. We included all patients with and without allergic eye disease having keratoconus, and our exclusion criteria were any patients with dry eye on previous topical therapy or any previous surgeries. This was a cross-sectional study approved by the Ethics Committee, which had 34 patients with KC and allergic eye disease, 27 with KC without allergic eye disease, and 30 controls. A thorough clinical evaluation was done, topography was done, tears and serum were analyzed. So the tears were analyzed using Shermer strip, which were put in Eppendorf tubes and stored at minus 80 degrees Celsius. And then the extraction of tears, we found the IgE by the multiplex ELISA method and other inflammatory markers like IL-4 and IL-13. Our systemic and local results showed that in patients with KC without allergic eye disease, there was an increasing trend of IgE over the different grades of keratoconus. So IgE can be high even without allergic eye disease. In patients in, with KC with allergic eye disease, it showed a trend of high IgE over the uh, different grades of keratoconus. The other inflammatory markers were raised in KC and KC with eye disease. I, I rubbing too. So increased serum and tear IgE results in eye rubbing and allergy, which would result in increased inflammation, collagen degradation, and keratoconus. Let me explain two cases of two young boys who came to us. These were their topographies. And most of us would agree we would go ahead and cross-link. But is that the only thing we can do for them? These patients had severe allergic eye disease, which was not controlled on topical steroids and other treatments. So we got a serum IgE level done, which we saw was high in both the cases. We asked for an immunologist's opinion, did a patch test, and we found out that the first boy was allergic to sunflower and the second to sheep wool allergy. Both of them were using this in their daily lives. So we asked them to avoid the allergen, and along with the immunologist, we started sublingual immunotherapy. Both the patients had significantly reduced allergy after that. We have published a five-point normogram telling us the high-risk characteristic scoring for progression. And the only modifiable risk factors in this are eye rubbing and atopic eye disease. So to translate this into our clinic, we say these patients with eye rubbing and allergic eye disease should avoid eye rubbing. We can start them on topical steroids and antihistaminic eye drops. If their serum IgE is high, which is we consider more than 300, we should get an immunologist's opinion, do a patch test, avoid the allergen, and then start on therapy as needed. We should wait for three months and then go ahead and cross-link the patient. So why is it important to wait and treat IgE first? This is because IgE causes allergic inflammation, and we know through our paper that LOX, which is an endogenous cross-linker, is attenuated in cases of inflammation. It shows that the LOX levels are lower with increasing severity of KC. And so, if we do not treat this inflammation before, we will result in suboptimal outcomes. So what does the future hold for us? We hope to get a point of care kit, which will enable us to measure the IgE levels at the bedside itself. What was known was the role of IgE in the pathogenesis of allergic eye disease. But what our paper adds is the identification of IgE in the tears and its role in eye rubbing, the management of systemic allergens by, most importantly, an immunologist. So why do all eye rubbers not get IgE, not get keratoconus? This is because 
Epigenetic factors like eye rubbing as well as genetic factors together play a role in causing keratoconus. So the debate continues, but now we know that systemic factors too play a role in eye rubbing. Thank you.